Hi, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Bella and I am a senior at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I've had two actual internships, one with AIG and one with Corbridge Financial. And today I'm here to give you advice on how to land your first actual internship. We'll go over things like where you can find actual internship postings, when you should apply, common interview questions, and general resume and interview tips. Make sure to like and subscribe if you like this video and want to see more content. We'll even talk about what to do if you haven't passed any actuarial exams yet. So right off the bat, when should you apply? Right now. Companies are already posting for internships for next summer, and it's only September. If you have companies in mind that you'd like to work for, but don't see any internship postings yet, check back every week on their careers website, because I guarantee you they are starting to hire for internships of 2024 summer already. Now, your next question might be, now that I know that I should be applying right now, where do I even go to apply for these internships? Lucky for you, there are plenty of resources you can go to to apply for these internships. One really great way to meet companies and apply for their internships is to go to your school's career fair. Most four-year colleges and universities will have an annual career fair sometime in the fall where you can go and talk with company representatives, give them your resume, and explain that you'd like to work for them as an intern. Another place you can go is a website called Handshake. You can find a bunch of companies and their job postings on Handshake and apply just by uploading your resume. One of my favorite places to look for job and internship postings is on LinkedIn in the job section. LinkedIn has a specific page where you can search for jobs by actual intern or actual internship, and it will show all the companies that are currently hiring. I like to check back on LinkedIn jobs at least once a week. And lastly, maybe even the most obvious one is to check on companies' career websites. So let's say you would like to work for Allstate or Cigna. All you have to do is go to their website, find their careers page, and look for jobs there. This strategy might be a little bit more tedious because you have to go to every single company's website and apply on each company's website. Instead of on LinkedIn, for example, you can find all the companies that are hiring, but some companies don't post on LinkedIn or Handshake, and therefore you have to go to their internal website to find their job postings. One of the biggest mistakes I see people making is only applying to companies that they've either heard of or that are local to them. A lot of companies now are either hybrid or remote. So if you're from one area of the country, but the internship is on another side, you could ask to do a remote internship or for some relocation support where the company will help you move to the other side of the country for the summer. Some companies even have apartments, especially for their interns. In my case, when I applied to AIG, I didn't really know much about the company but I was looking for any internship I could get, so I applied anyways, and I ended up getting an interview and landing an internship. So don't be afraid to apply to companies that you might have never heard of or that are far away from you. Now, I know that it can be challenging to apply for internships when you have no previous internship experience or no exams passed, and that's why it's crucial to not limit your options. Cast as wide of a net as possible and apply to as many companies as you can. This will only increase your chances of getting an internship. My best tip for applying to a lot of companies is to send out one finalized resume to all of them. That way you don't have to create a new resume for each job you apply to. If necessary, you can always go back and tailor your resume to the specific job description that the internship has. Another strategy to get an internship is to connect with recruiters on LinkedIn. Search up the company that you'd like to work for along with the keyword recruiter or talent acquisition specialist. And you'll often find people who work for the company that are actively recruiting. Connect with these people on LinkedIn and even send them a message saying that you are looking for an internship opportunity within the company. Additionally, if you have companies in mind that you'd like to work for, follow them on LinkedIn. That way you can keep up to date with the company and see if they post about any internship or job opportunities. When companies are recruiting for internships, they often do post on LinkedIn telling their network and followers that they are looking for interns and they even provide a link to the job description. The last strategy to land your first internship is to connect with alumni from your school who work at that company you're looking for. For example, if you would like to work at Travelers, for example, search on LinkedIn for people who work at travelers who have also gone to your school. Connect with them, reach out, and ask if they can have a short meeting with you where you can ask about their experience in getting an internship. 
What helped them to secure the internship? What characteristics or skills do they believe help them? And what tips can they give you to land the internship as well? Typically, people who have gone to your school are much more likely to help you when getting a job. Now, I think it's time that we take a moment to talk about what you should do if you haven't passed any actuarial exams or if it's even possible to get an internship with no exams passed. I do believe that it is possible. However, it is more difficult, as you would expect. Most companies require their interns to have at least one actual exam passed. However, there are a couple ways you can land an internship with no exams passed. Here's how. Strategy number one is to make really great connections with the people at the company. A great place to do this is at those career fairs that I mentioned earlier. You can talk to the recruiters and connect with them either on a personal level, such as some hobbies that you share, or really demonstrate your passion for the field and why you would love to work for the company. Don't just say that you're looking for an internship to gain more experience. Tell them exactly why you are in the actual field, what inspires you to keep going, and try and connect with them on some sort of intellectual level. Strategy number two is to really demonstrate your commitment to the field and progress towards exams. Hopefully, if you're looking for an internship, you have done some case studies or worked on some projects in your classes that you can tell the recruiters about and show exactly why you're interested in an internship. You could even talk about relevant coursework where you've used certain programming languages like R, or Excel or Python. So basically, if you're looking for an actual internship, but you haven't passed any of the exams, it may be difficult, but it is possible. All right, let's move on to resume tips. First off, make sure that your LinkedIn is up to date. Include your education, your skills, your relevant coursework, any past experience, your volunteering experience, your achievements, your GPA, anything that you can add on your LinkedIn Add it. You can even attach your resume to your LinkedIn as a PDF. That way, any recruiter that comes across your profile on LinkedIn will be able to see your resume and see if you're a good fit for the role. Specifically on your resume, make sure to highlight any relevant experience or skills, such as what I talked about earlier with your relevant coursework, the projects that you've completed, the certifications you've had for either Excel or R Studio, anything that can make you a desirable candidate for an internship. A few notes about your resume. Make sure your exams passed are near the top. So for example, on your resume, you usually have your name at the top and your experience, right? Right under your name, write the actual exams that you have passed. That way it sticks out and the recruiter or whoever is reviewing your resume immediately knows how many exams you passed because that is important. Also include any exams that are upcoming or that you're sitting for. So for example, in my case, I've taken PNFM, but I'm sitting or about to take my third exam. So at the top of my resume, I have my name and right below that I say exams passed P comma FM, which are the first two exams comma MAS one in October, 2023, which is the third exam. Another great strategy for creating a great resume is to use keywords from the job description that you're applying to. So for example, if you're applying to an actual internship, a lot of times they will talk about data or statistics or actual exams passed. Anything that keeps coming up in job descriptions is something you should be putting on your resume if you have experience in it. Now, my last tip right now for your resume is to include quantitative data. What do I mean by this? I mean, for any experience that you've had in the past, such as a job, even if it's something small like being a barista, include quantitative data that shows your impact. Try and use numbers as much as possible in the bullet points that explain what your job role was. An example might be that if you worked as a barista, that you prepared up to 50 drinks an hour. See how that includes a number? Or if you worked on a project, you could say, the project I worked on helped save this amount of time, or you reduced the runtime by three hours every quarter. Side note, if you would like to see a separate video where I walk through my own resume and give more general interview and resume tips, feel free to comment down below. But for now, I have my own resume linked in the description below, and you can also find it on my LinkedIn profile. All right, last but not least, let's talk about when you get an interview for an internship. Make sure you are maintaining eye contact throughout the whole interview. I know it can be tempting to want to look away when you're thinking or think about things by looking away or even being intimidated by the interviewer and not looking at them. However, eye contact is key and it shows confidence and trustworthiness. Now, it is very common for interviewers to use behavioral-based questions, meaning they ask questions to see how you react in different situations. For example, tell me about a time you had to deal with a difficult coworker. 
or tell me about a time that you missed a deadline. These questions can be tough if you are not prepared to answer them. So my advice is to not only prepare for these sorts of questions before you go into the interview, but also make sure you're answering these questions with the STAR method. The STAR method stands for situation, task, action and result. So when you answer these types of questions, make sure that you are talking about the situation that you were in when you encountered the problem, the task that you were assigned or given, the action that you took to resolve the problem, and the result. Now, like I mentioned before, these types of questions can be very difficult to answer if you're not prepared, and you can't predict the kinds of questions that they're going to ask you. So how can you prepare for these types of questions? Well, my advice is to be prepared with a few sets of different answers that you can apply to most any question. Before you go into the interview, look over your resume and think about the types of questions that they might ask you and how you can apply your relevant experience or skills to these questions. Don't be afraid to use the same experiences to answer different questions. For example, if you've been a barista, you could use that example to answer questions about effective communication or teamwork or getting things done on time, such as time management. As you can see, you can take any example or any experience and fit it to any type of question if you are prepared to answer these. Now I'm going to read some interview questions that I've received in my own internship interviews that I think will be helpful for you all to review and to be prepared for. The first question, of course, is tell me about yourself. For this question, I recommend giving a brief overview on your major, the school that you go to, the number of exams you've passed, any relevant experience you've taken, any hobbies you might have, and what you are looking for, such as an internship. The second question an interviewer might ask you is, tell me about X on your resume. Be prepared to talk about everything and anything on your resume for any question that they might have about your experiences. Another very common question is, why do you want to work for this company? Tell me about a time you didn't get along with a team member. What's your biggest achievement and your biggest failure? What are your greatest strengths and what are your greatest weaknesses? Have you had any leadership experience? And if so, tell me about it. One of my favorite questions that they ask is, why should we choose you over other candidates? This is a question where you can really showcase your skills, tell them about why you're such a great fit for this role. Another question might be, how do you juggle multiple priorities at the same time if there's an upcoming deadline? And lastly, tell me about a time that you took initiative to start a project. Those are all the tips that I have for you today about getting an actual internship. I hope this video was really helpful. And if you have any leftover questions, please comment down below. I will make sure to respond to any questions that I see. As always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.